Okay, so I have shared the slides, I'll link to them in the chat. And um, the way we've got the timing on this one, it's probably going to be about eight minutes of presenting um, by me, and then about two minutes of sharing a Code for America specific example um, by my co-presenter, Gregory Johnson. And so we may need to take a slightly higher percentage of the questions in chat um, for this presentation. Um, my background is that as in teaching uh, public policy and public management and logic models were one of my favorite things to teach um, in that subject area. So I'm really excited to be here and um, to share a little bit more about logic models to you. Um, and I'd like to do this um, in light of a couple of things that I've already heard are big priorities for brigades. So I'll start by um, laying some of the groundwork, um, teaching you how to define what is a logic model and describe the parts of a logic model. Uh, but then really two priorities that I hear is how do you use a logic model for stakeholder engagement and how do you use a logic model for fundraising? Logic models can be um, tremendously valuable tools in making your case to granting organizations um, because it's speaking their visual language. Um, it's a way to speak their visual language because they need to compare multiple um, worthy projects and um, to make tough decisions about what to fund. And speaking this consistent visual language can be very helpful for that. So let's talk about um, some of the, lay the groundwork for some of the very basics of logic models. A logic model is a way to describe how a program works. And here we're using the term program in a very specific way. You might say, is this jargon? Isn't jargon bad? Well, in this context, some of these terms we use um, in a very specific way to describe everyday activities very precisely because our audience is used to making very fine distinctions among things that otherwise sometimes get all jumbled together. So here what we mean by a program is systematic efforts to achieve specific objectives for improving health, education, and well-being. So what are some Code for America examples of programs? Um, definitely uh, Clear My Record, um, Get CalFresh. These are some examples of programs that we're used to thinking of in a Code for America context. And to make this session a little more interactive, I would love to see folks share in the chat some examples of programs of this type of program that you're familiar with, whether through your brigade or even programs of your um, state government of the US federal government, think about some programs of these types. These programs um, all, they're a systematic way to improve health, education, and well-being. And we have ideas about how they achieve those results. A theory of change is a very abstract thing um, that describes how and why a desired change is expected to happen in a particular context. So a theory is an abstraction. It could exist as a mental model. It could exist as a narrative. But when it takes a systematic visual form, um, we call it a logic model. Um, so I offer you this um, definition of a logic model, a systematic and visual way to present and share your understanding of the relationships among the resources you have to operate your program, the activities you plan, um, and the changes or results you hope to achieve. So the nouns you have, the verbs you plan to do, and then the, you know, the outcomes, how you plan to make a difference. Okay. So with that, what would this visual representation look like? Um, You've seen many flowcharts. I know there are a lot of IT computer folks here who say, is this just another flowchart? In a way, yes, but it's a very specific type of, of flowchart. Again, that speaks the visual language of people who make a lot of decisions about allocating resources. 
So if you can describe your uh, program in the form of this type of a flow chart, it's something that a grant officer um, at a government granting agency or a foundation can easily absorb. Um, start with the resources you need to carry out the program. Assuming they give you the green light, what do you need? Um, yes, money, but how much? What human resources, what physical resources, what software resources, what do you need to carry out um, the program? And then what literally will you do? What actions will you take um, in carrying out the program? The next step, and this is the trickiest one, so if this sounds confusing, this is where most people get confused, is um, we often measure something called an output, which is our direct evidence of service delivery. Um, this is how we show that the program actually took place. And maybe the most important thing about outputs is that we don't stop here. Uh, because outputs aren't inherently valuable themselves. Um, they would be things like attendance, things like visits to a website, but they're not inherently valuable on their own. We move on to then the changes we really want to see, changes in behavior or capabilities resulting from the program or policy. These are the outcomes. This is what your um, funder or granting agency is going to be most um, focused on, on seeing. How does the participant actually change through the program? What are the, the positive ways that they see changes in behavior or capabilities? Finally, you want to see impact, things that go beyond the individual participants in a program to maybe broader community or societal change. This is not always so feasible to measure for a program, but when you can, it's really compelling in telling the story of your program. Okay, so um, now I have a slightly humorous example. Quit looking so serious, everyone I can see on the call, uh, because we're gonna talk about vampires for a little bit um, in the spirit of October. Um, this is a humorous example that was developed to teach about logic models and said, well, what if we wanna do a health program to help the vampires of Sunnydale. And it was put together by a group of librarians. So they think about helping people by teaching them to use library resources. What resources do they need? They need internet access and garlic. They need a projector and they need holy water. Okay, who needs to be there and participate? Yes, the staff, but also the vampires. Okay, they plan on hosting some evening training on their databases, and they're going to start something called a 12 hour dusk to dawn health reference um, hotline. Then um, they're going to measure their outputs, their measure of reach, outcomes, um, satisfaction, learning, and then they're going to have impact. Vampires have improved health and ever longer lives, if you can say that about the undead. Um, and stronger bonds with their human communities, re reducing intergroup conflict. Um, I hope you enjoyed this humorous, lighthearted example, but I know to really absorb the material, you're also going to want a, an authentic example um, from Code for America. So I'm going to um, bring this example up here um, and let um, Gregory Johnson take you through this example from Code for South Florida. Thanks, Jennifer. So my name is Gregory Johnson. I'm from Code for South Florida. For many that don't know, Code for South Florida is its own 501c3 nonprofit. We're also happy to be partners of Code for America and the National Brigade. And during our time of restructure and my leadership of the group, one of the pressing things for me was making sure we could grab and ask for funding and make sure that organizations knew between the distinction between us and Code for America. Um, we have seven paid staff today, and this illustration is of when we went to a funder and made an ask to see if we can help for earned income tax credit. And what we did is we found a synergy between Code for America's existing program, Get Your Refund, and the work that we're doing locally. So this is an illustration of how we use logic models to pitch to this funder, as well as how we gave updates to stakeholders about what, the work that we're doing. 
So this isn't everything. These are just some brief points that I thought of. But on the resource side, the way we looked at it was there are these things called EITC partners, Earned Income Tax Credit Partners. These are organizations that offer assistance. Um, and formerly, they offered assistance in person, and now they have to do this virtual. So they were the top resource that we thought about reaching. Um, another thing we needed was funding, right? I have paid staff, but we need certain people to be assigned to the role. So we put funding here from Citibank, which is our main funder. We also got paid staff from my team to work on this. And we then aligned with government employees. So we worked with the city of Miami who had a tax program running in person for about 20 or 30 plus years. And then we looked at channel partners, people that can help bring the message of the program that we're doing. If you're unfamiliar with Get Your Refund, it's a service that makes it easier pe for people to file for taxes. And on the back end, there's partners in the communities that are actually working through and following up with each person so they make sure they have all their information to file for their taxes so they can get their refund. In terms of activities, what we did on the ground floor and recognized that we could do really well compared to um, our na the National President's Code for America had was we had all the relationships at, with the community. So a part of our activity was doing community outreach about the tool, giving them updates on new things that were happening, as well as doing partner training. In Miami, you have a very unique demographic. People speak English, Spanish, Haitian Creole. So being able to facilitate that training through our staff, as well as bring to Code for America feedback they were getting from Get Your Refund is super important to our activities, doing program management, and then doing communications within our communities and making sure everybody was in line as we kind of grew this. In terms of outputs, some of the things that we did was we had a lot of digital resources. So we built websites, we built process flows, we did a lot of internal work with our partners. We also created an earned income uh, tax credit plan. So we worked with these partners to have a future plan. And the outcomes were actually phenomenal. For us, um, one of the big ones is in four months, we were able to get people um, $1.1 million. And today, this is more than that. But we were able to help 400 plus people in our community um, file for their taxes before each organization would not be able to get to the amount of people that they did through this program. Two, we were able to get five organizations that had never done anything virtual on virtual in less than two weeks, many of which had more than 50 plus employees or staff members that had to get trained. And then in terms of impact, the work that we did at the local level was something that the funder was able to see and say, wow, this is great. We wanna bring this to other cities. How can we go and fund this? Oh, let's go to Code for America. So we're one of actually the first brigade studies of a local funder taking this model, going to Code for America and then funding them to expand the work that Get Your Refund is doing. I can't talk about what CFA has done um, after that, but we've also seen all the results have been phenomenal, but this just shows how our local models can help facilitate and help push and amplify the message of Code for America. And for us as an organization, after we implementing this logic model, we were able to bring on a grant coordinator to help us at different funding initiatives. So this methodology is really important. And if you're unfamiliar with it, there's actually some write-ups around impact cascades, which are a little bit similar to this, um, but touch on many of the same points. So that's my case study. Thanks, Jen. So to land this uh, plane, so to speak, we're um, now ready to define a logic model, describe its parts, and to use a logic model for stakeholder engagement and fundraising. I want to point you towards some of the resources that um, I used to prepare my portion of the, of the talk. And also um, invite, if you would like a longer or more interactive version um, to talk about this um, about logic models with your brigade, reach out to me um, and I would be happy to, to talk with you about that.